change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden, hanging out in my car in the rain next to the Battenkill River. Just finished up a really good run, and what did I have post run? I've got a Mama Chia Squeezy. I've got a Green Leaf Kale Squeezy. I had a Pumpkin Pie Larabar. And prior to the run, I had a Beet Performer Beet Juice. Yum! Doing a lot of beet juice now because Beat Performer is actually sponsoring me. Anyway, today was a really challenging run and it comes after a road race yesterday. And the reason that I want to make this video today is that I've been feeling rather sluggish. It's a good word. I haven't been really confident with my speed or my power. I've been doing lots of snowshoe training since December and lots of big boot running in the deep snow, months and months of this. And the fastest races that I have run all winter have been snowshoe races, which are always quite slow in comparison to road racing uh, or even in comparison to trail running. So. As I've been training and getting back onto the roads, now that the snow is mostly gone, I've just had this sluggishness in my legs. I felt like I couldn't run faster than an eight minute mile. Even running at a nine minute mile, my legs felt heavy, they felt tired, they felt sluggish, and they just did not want to move any faster. But I know from experience that just because I feel sluggish at that speed doesn't mean that I'm going to feel sluggish at all speeds. In other words, the body and the brain has different gears. And each gear has a certain range, just like in a car. First gear is really good for moving very slowly, but if I get up to 15 or 20 miles an hour, I'm maxing out first gear, and first gear is not going to be happy. So if I try to move faster in first gear, I'm going to feel it, and it's going to feel like effort. It's going to feel like crap. So i got to shift. i got to move into second gear. Now, if I try to go five miles an hour in second gear, the car is going to stall. It's not going to work. There's not going to be enough interest. There's not going to be enough motivation. So I can't start the car in second, and I can't start the car in fifth gear, which is hopefully what I want to get up to, if I'm driving down the highway, if I'm doing 65 miles an hour, I want this car to be in fifth gear. And in a road race, I want to be moving in fifth gear. I don't want to be running that race in first gear. So I can't start a run in fifth gear, and I can't start the car in fifth gear. I've got to start in the appropriate place. So for me, the appropriate place to start is always in park. <laughs> Hopefully you're not starting your car in first gear. Put it in park. So that's my process of pulling back the covers and getting out the door and putting my clothes on, etc. Well, hopefully you put your clothes on before you get out the door. But you know what I'm talking about. You've heard me say it a million times. And most of the runs that I do, the vast majority, I'm running in first gear. I just never really feel good enough to move into second gear. And that's one of the reasons that I love snowshoe training and big boot training is that it's tiring, it's challenging, but I'm never moving fast. Even when I'm really feeling the effort, I'm never moving fast. And why I like that so much is that in the winter, I'm having a tough time. It's hard just to get myself out there. So I like a workout that allows me to move really slowly. A workout that's really gentle on my speed that allows me to be in first gear but also get a really good workout in just because it's so challenging uh, and I'm never needing to go out of first gear but then come spring right now I've been running in first gear for four months four and a half months so my body's like Mm, I don't know if you can run in second gear I don't know if you even have a second gear anymore let alone fifth 
And my brain is thinking, geez, maybe, maybe I'm done. Maybe I'm just old. Maybe this is what old age feels like. So I hopped in a road race yesterday just to see. I did a warm up prior to the race, two miles at about 845 pace per mile and felt like crap. In the warm up in first gear, it felt like the best I'm gonna do is eight minute pace. That's what my legs were saying. That's what my brain was saying. But again, I know from experience, all I have to do is shift gears. Most people don't realize that they have different gears. And this is why most people never move from the back of the pack to the front of the pack because they're running in first gear the whole time in their training and in the racing, not realizing they can shift. But unlike a car or most cars these days, which are automatic transmissions, a human being has a manual transmission. You have to do the shifting. It doesn't happen automatically. And it's not easy to do. So this is why I hop into a race. It was an 8K and I don't ever like to start super hard. So I don't allow myself to go completely into herd mode, but I like to allow that to shift my gears and then I consciously dial it to the place where I wanna be. And for me, that's always a certain heart rate, which at the beginning of a race is around 150. So tune into my heart rate on my watch, 150, we're good. And then as the race progresses, I slowly pick it up. Now we're at 160 and then eventually I'll get up into the 170s. But I ran the first mile, I think at a 522 uh, with about four guys and felt really comfortable. But yet in the warm up, I was running an 845 mile and felt like crap. But now a 522 feels easy, feels like I'm just floating because I'm in a different gear. Just like going down the highway. If you're trying to go 65 miles an hour in first gear, not going to happen. You're not going to get to 65 miles an hour. You're going to burn the engine out long before you ever get there. Same with a race. If you don't shift and you stay in first gear, maybe you'll squeak out a 745. Maybe. But man, is it going to suck. So, turns out yesterday... I've got speed, even though I'm not training for speed, even though I'm not doing intervals, even though I'm not doing strength, even though I'm not doing hill repeats, nothing on the track. I've just been doing boot running and snowshoe running at like 11 to 15 minutes per mile all winter long, except my races. But even those are rarely under seven minutes per mile in a snowshoe race. That's rare that you break seven minutes. So there it is, 520 pace or 522 pace, pretty comfortable. Uh, it was hilly, and I wasn't really sure how far I should push in an 8K. Again, I was just testing it out. Ended up finishing in, I think, 26.59, which is about a 5.26 pace per mile on average. Decent, not great, uh, but decent. For somebody that didn't feel like he could run faster than eight minutes, I'll take it. So, boom, all right, did that. And that gear exists. And now I have more data to tell me that. But I know this because I've been experiencing this for years now. And every single time I get the same results. But guess what? My brain forgets that. My brain tells me, no, you don't have that speed. It's not going to be there. So one of the reasons that I hop into races almost every weekend is to show myself, oh, yep, see, there it is. You doubted it, but here it is. So the longer you go between testing yourself, the more likely it is that you're going to start to actually believe and own that you only have one gear and it's done. It's almost maxed out. So today I thought, all right, well, I know I've got road speed now that I haven't been training for, but there it is. What about hill speed? Do I have hill strength? I really haven't been training for hills, uphill events. So I went on Strava, I found a course record not too far away, that a trail I've never run on, really decent climb. It's a little over 1,500 feet vertical in two miles, so pretty steep. And I thought, I'll go there and I'll just check it out. I'll just start running and allow the course record to kind of flip the switch for me, to shift that gear. Because just running up the hill alone, I'd do it in first gear. 
But when I put that course record out there, suddenly my brain and my body says, okay, this is something different, and it shifts me. It changes my physiology, puts me into a higher gear. So the course record, I think, was 30 minutes and 51 seconds. And I ran a 2440-something. So I knocked about six minutes off of the course record. And it was work. It was hard. But I powered up the hills and felt good, felt really, really strong. So again, I've been training in first gear, going up climbs, thinking, oh my God, my legs are just so weak. I've gotten so weak over the winter. I've got nothing. My legs are burning in first gear. Well, in fifth gear, they were burning, but they felt just as good as first gear trying to go too hard. So the moral of the story is that we have different states that we can operate inside of. And most people don't know this. They haven't experienced this. They haven't experimented enough with shifting themselves into a different state physically and mentally, emotionally, consciously, whatever you want to call it. We've got different zones that we can function inside of. And each one of them has a range of optimal function. Fifth gear is great for going hard, but fifth gear is not good for going easy because you're going to stall out. First gear, great for going slow, not good if you want to go fast. So most people when they set goals or when they try to engage in exercise or any kind of life transformation, they throw a fifth gear goal in front of them and they think they need to be in fifth gear on day one. Okay, I'm sick and tired of being heavy. I'm sick and tired of not moving. I'm sick and tired of eating junk. I'm going raw vegan tonight. I'm going to the gym right now. I'm hiring a trainer and I'm getting into a boot camp and I want them to kick my arse. That's fifth gear. But problem is you don't know how to get into fifth gear yet. You haven't been there. You haven't practiced it. You haven't found a way to get yourself to shift which is what many meditation practices do, which is what the flow state is all about. If you've read any of the work of Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, uh, people that get into deliberate practice and really, really put in the time to the point where they change states. You got to practice this. You got to practice, 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 but you got to start and park. Then slowly move into first and then into second and then into third. And your body and your brain, they're going to help you get there, but only if they feel safe in the gear that you're in. If you try going too hard in first gear or try to jump into fifth too quickly, not going to happen. So when you commit to a goal, you need to realize that you got to start in park. Let yourself be in park. I know it's going to be frustrating. It's going to feel like you're never going to get there. You're going to shift into first gear or you're going to shift into low it's like, oh my God, seriously, I'm never going to get there. But time flies. I look in the mirror, shaving, and I see all this gray in my beard, gray in my hair. My hair is thinning. I'm getting wrinkly. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm getting old. And it went like that. So time flies. And even though you think you're not getting anywhere, if you're patient, and allow yourself to start and park. Allow yourself to warm up in first and do most of your work in first gear. And then every now and again, let yourself shift into fifth and knock it out of the park. You'll be amazed at how far you can go and how fast you can get there. But let yourself get there slowly. There's no rush. Okay? So I hope there's something of value in there for you. If you want to see the run I did today, I will put that link below the Strava link also for yesterday's race you can check that out in the description below and if you like this video and you want to support me in making more videos like this and doing more research please go to my patreon feed sign up for two bucks a month uh, I'm trying to put more and more stuff up there that is not available anywhere else um, so that you get a bonus of that and also you help me stay in this game uh, I'm researching, researching, researching. I've already read six books in the month of April, and it's April 16th. So some really good stuff and some not so good stuff, but I take notes on everything I read. If I don't like something, I take notes on it. Why don't I like it? Where does it fall apart? 
And I'm going to be trying to get that up on Strava as well. Strava? Patreon. Patreon! So head over there to Patreon. I'll put the link in the description below. And for those of you that are supporting this channel and what I'm up to on Patreon, thank you so much. And to all of you out there still watching this video, I love you. And I'm going to go home now and eat. Bye. Thank you.